Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1983 Volvo 242 Turbo Evolution now it's 735 horsepower, 532 pound-feet of torque from a 3.6 litre turbocharged inline 6 engine and the vehicle itself weighs 2,791 pounds it now has all-wheel drive, off-road tyres and off-road suspension and it can do not 16 2.239 seconds not to 104.922 seconds and going to a top speed of 211 miles an hour. So yeah, we've had plenty of uh, early 80s, 70s, you know, rally cars. Well, the road-going versions of those rally cars. And uh, yeah, some have proved more successful than others, and I'm hoping that this will be on the uh, more successful side because it is one of my uh, favourite, you know, 80s cars, let alone uh, 80s rally cars. And uh, yeah, quite frankly, it makes me uh, want more classic Volvos. Quite frankly, I know we've had a few over the uh, years in Forza games, but we've had a uh, not quite so many of the oddities that uh, Volvo has produced over the time. So yeah, the likes of this wouldn't do like make me want you know more from them from that kind of 80s and early 90s era. I know everything they weren't they were making back then wasn't great, but it was at least interesting in some regards. This though is a big brick, as you can see. It's very square. But with all this extra power and the all-wheel drive system and the like, it's still, you know, reasonably quick. Decent amount of speed down there. But unlike some other, you know, classic rally cars that we've had on this series, this is quite weighty. But maybe that weight, extra weight, will give it some stability. reasonably speedy across the finish line but not quite as quick as the Renault 5 Turbo I don't think but at 2 minutes 7 seconds 0.688 seconds it's done reasonably well but yeah speaking of the Renault 5 Turbo it's not quite as quick as that car about half a second behind but it has beaten the likes of the Vauxhall Insignia VXR the Austin FX4 Taxi, a fellow early 80s uh, rally car in the form of the uh, Abarth Fiat 131, the Exomotive Exo set, Ford Anglia 105E, Ram Rebel TRX Concept and the MG MGA Twin Cam. But yeah, it's behind the Alfa Romeo Stelvio and the Porsche Cayenne Turbo, and like I said, behind the Renault 5 Turbo as well as the Lancia Stratos, Renault Alpine and Opel Manta 400. So uh, yeah, slower than a few classic rally cars there, but quicker than a... Uh, another one and uh, yeah quicker than a uh, modern off-roader or two and uh, yeah reasonably uh, quick in comparison to uh, you know some uh, slightly more modern off-roaders that are slightly ahead of it so uh, yeah not at all bad whatsoever especially considering it does have a fair bit of weight for a classic car like this while not dealing with the most power from a car on this series so uh, yeah it did reasonably well no real flaws in it whatsoever apart from the fact that it doesn't quite have as much power as other vehicles on the series but that's just down to the fact of uh, the kind of uh, engines that I had to choose from only had this inline 6 or the rally uh, turbo inline 4 engine and that produces even less power when upgraded than this so uh, yeah not much choices there which is a big shame and it is a kind of a problem with these kind of uh, retro classic rally cars they tend to only have one or two engines available which is a big shame but at least, uh, yeah, it was a fun car to drive, and uh, yeah, far from the slowest, being uh, comfortably in the uh, top 25 there. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.